In this video, we will discuss how to diagnose various congenital heart disease with an ECG. First, I will show the ECG, then we will discuss the findings in it and then diagnose the condition using these findings. So let's get started. This is the first ECG. Carefully look at it. The rhythm is sinus as each P wave is followed by a normal QRS complex and the heart rate is 75 beats per minute. As there are four large boxes in between two R waves, the heart rate is 300 divided by 4, that is 75 beats per minute. There is right axis deviation. To calculate axis, we have to look at QRS complexes in the lead 1 and ABF. Let's plot the net QRS amplitude in the hex axial reference system. In lead 1, the R wave amplitude is 5 small boxes, that is positive 0.5 millivolt, and the amplitude of S wave in lead 1 is 6 small boxes, that is minus 0.6 millivolt. So the net amplitude is minus 0.1 millivolt. Let's plot it in the hex axial reference diagram. In lead AVF, the R wave amplitude is positive 0.5 millivolt and there is no major negative waves. Let's plot it in the diagram. Draw perpendicular lines from this point. The lines where they meet is the QRS axis. Here it is more than 90 degrees. So there is right axis deviation. Next, we will check the QRS morphology in lead V1 to V3. In lead V2, there is RSR pattern, but the QRS duration is normal. That is within three small boxes. One small box is 0 0.04 seconds that is less than 0.12 seconds. In this ECG, the QRS duration is 0.08 seconds as it occupies only two small boxes. RSR pattern with normal QRS duration is called incomplete right bundle branch block. One more abnormality seen in this ECG is notching off the R wave in lead 2. So let's summarize the abnormal findings. First is right axis deviation, second is incomplete right bundle branch block and third is the notched R wave in lead 2. These findings point towards the diagnosis of ostium secundum atrial septal defect. Right axis deviation is due to volume and pressure overload of the right ventricle. Incomplete right bundle branch block is due to delayed depolarization of the thickened right ventricular outflow tract and possibly due to right ventricular volume overload. Notched R wave correlates with the size of the defect and implies a greater degree of shunting. It disappears after the defect closure. The notched R wave in the inferior leads is called Crochetage sign. If crochetage sign is present in all three inferior leads, that is lead 2, 3, and AVF, along with incomplete right bundle branch block, it is more specific for diagnosis of atrial septal defect. It should be noted that presence of only incomplete right bundle branch block without any other ECG changes may be a normal finding in children. Hence, incomplete right bundle branch block alone is inadequate to diagnose ASD. In ASD, there is also defective T wave pattern, which is seen as inverted or horizontal displacement of the proximal T wave in the right precordial leads, that is V1 to V3. Incomplete RBB, that is right bundle branch block, along with the presence of defective T wave in V1 to V3 is also more specific to diagnose atrial septal defect. Let's look at another ECG. 
there is incomplete right bundle branch block that is RSR pattern in V1 to V3. But let's calculate the QRS axis. The QRS amplitude is positive in lead 1 but negative in AVF. So there is left axis deviation. This leads to the diagnosis of ostium primum atrial septal defect. In ostium primum atrial septal defect, there is left axis deviation due to the absence of left anterior vesicle. The left axis deviation persists even after closure of the defect. There is also one more abnormality in this ECG. Let us see the PR interval, that is the time from the onset of P wave to the onset of the QRS complex. It reflects conduction through the AV node. Normally the PR interval is less than 0.2 seconds. In this ECG, the PR interval occupies 6 small boxes, that is 6 into 0.04 seconds, which equals to 0.24 seconds. In other words, there is PR prolongation or first degree AV block or first degree hot block. So in ostium primum ASD, there is incomplete right bundle branch block, left axis deviation and first degree hot block. Let's see another ECG. There is incomplete right bundle branch block, that is RSR pattern in V1. There is notched R wave in Li2 that is crochet touch pattern is present and if you carefully look there is inverted P waves in the inferior leads that is lead 2, 3 and AVF. The inverted P waves in the inferior leads is suggestive of absent or deficient sinus node function. These findings are pointing towards the diagnosis of sinus venous type of atrial septal defect. It should be noted that ECG findings can only point towards the diagnosis of ASD. It has to be always confirmed by echocardiography. Thanks for watching this video. Hope it was useful. See you soon with more ECG videos.